it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Proudly sponsored by Farmer Junior Nice Coffee. Hi guys, welcome to the second part of uh, this uh, first topic for Year 12 Chemistry. Uh, subtopic 1.2 is all about uh, photochemical smog. So we're going to be looking at what causes photochemical smog um, and uh, what um, issues it poses to humans. Um, so first of all, before we look at photochemical smog, you need to understand a little bit of the nitrogen cycle. Okay, nitrogen is a very, very stable molecule. It's a nitrogen, if you actually draw it out, it looks like this. It's a nitrogen atom with a triple bond, a triple covalent bond to another nitrogen atom. Now that triple bond makes it very, very stable. Okay, and so it doesn't react and it requires a lot of energy to actually break that triple bond so you can use the nitrogen to form other molecules. So um, if we're going to actually use it, we have to do something called nitrogen fixations. There's a couple of um, ways that happens. It can happen naturally via lightning or nitrogen fixing bacteria and plants. It can also happen artificially. So in combustion engines, that supplies enough energy to break that nitrogen triple bond. Uh, you can also um, have like supersonic aircraft, which supply a lot of energy to break that nitrogen triple bond as well. When you do have that nitrogen and you um, are able to supply enough energy, the first reaction is this one here, okay, where we get nitrogen reacting with oxygen to form nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide, same sort of thing. Okay. Once we've converted it into an oxide of nitrogen, it starts to become far more reactive. That can combine with more oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. Now, nitrogen dioxide here is quite a unique gas in that it is brown. Okay, and um, that's important when we're talking about photochemical smog because that's one of the really clear indications that you've got it occurring. You see a brown haze. So quite often um, in the morning or um, late in the afternoon, you might see a brown haze over a city and that's due to the presence of photochemical smog. And so uh, what I'll say is that these are key reactions, so it's really important that you do learn them. Okay, so if we're looking at how plants use nitrogen, right, as we said, it's an, um, they can use nitrogen fixing bacteria, and they do it because nitrogen is a really essential nutrient. There's three of them, NPK, which are the normal nutrients that are really essential for them. And so we use uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They're the three key ones they need. All right. However, they can only absorb it through the root system. Okay, so it must be a water-soluble form of nitrogen. Okay, in order for them to be able to absorb it into their um into their system. So what they can do is use some nitrogen-fixing bacteria to get into nitrates, which are NO3 minus, and that is water-soluble and can be absorbed up through their roots. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so just showing you some of these um different um equations here of for how they convert it into a water-soluble form. So the nitrogen dioxide that you've got here, okay, that can dissolve in water to form. This is nitric acid. And it can also form nitrous acid over here. Both of these are water-soluble and that allows you to have this nitrogen as a water-soluble form that the plants can absorb through their root system. Now, when we're talking about photochemical smog, we need to talk about what are called primary and secondary pollutants. So nitrogen in the air, when it reacts to form nitrogen um, monoxide, that's what we call a primary pollutant. So when we're talking about pollutants, we're obviously talking about man-made things here. So we're talking about combustion engines okay, or factories. And those gases that they emit directly into the air are the primary pollutants. Now, those um, chemicals in the air, those um, molecules quite often undergo other reactions. And if they um, form other chemicals in the air, um, the ke new chemicals that they formed are called secondary pollutants. So if the nitrogen monoxide reacts to form nitrogen dioxide, that brown gas, that's form a secondary pollutant. All right? And as I said, nitrogen dioxide is brown and it's responsible for the haze you see over many cities. <clears throat> so it's a very clear indicator if you've got that um, brown haze there that you've obviously got um, that conversion of nitrogen into nitrogen monoxide occurring in car engines and then the further reaction in the atmosphere in the presence of sunlight. So photochemical smog occurs when we have what's called a temperature inversion. So this diagram here is showing a temperature inversion. So normally as you go up from the surface of the earth, as you can see here, uh, the temperature decreases as you go up, which is what you'd expect, okay, because there becomes, uh, as, as the uh, warm um, uh, infrared radiation from the surface of the earth is radiated up all right it um, dissipates as it goes up and so the air gets cooler what happens with the temperature inversion is you've got your cool air here and then you get this warm blanket over here of warm air 
And what that does is that stops this cool, um, cool air from, or the air from actually just going up and mixing. And so you get this, um, any pollutants or chemicals that are in here stay within this cooler air and they can't escape. So you get a buildup of chemicals within here. Now that, that pollution, which builds up over here within this cool air, okay, um, is what leads to the presence of photochemical smog. Now it's really important, obviously, that you have no wind, okay, because if you have no wind, that will stop this air from mixing. As soon as you get um, warm air, these start to mix and all the um, pollution starts to dissipate and you don't get your um, photochemical smog, smog anymore. And we also need sunlight. Sunlight is actually a catalyst. That's why it's photochemical. It's a chemical reaction that relies upon the presence of light and that helps speed up a lot of the reactions. So it's really important that all four of these things are present. So what happens is the nitrogen dioxide is broken down by absorbing ultraviolet light, which comes from the um, sun, and that produces ozone. So what we have here is our nitrogen dioxide. It absorbs this high energy um, ultraviolet light, and it actually splits the nitrogen dioxide into nitrogen monoxide and what we call an oxygen radical. All right, that oxygen is uh, sometimes called a free radical. Okay. And free radicals are really, really um, readily want to react with other things. So what happens is the free radical reacts with an oxygen um, molecule. So this is an oxygen molecule and we form ozone. Okay. This M here um, is just another gas. So all that does is absorb the excess energy which this free radical has to get rid of. Now, up in the stratosphere, which is the second layer of the atmosphere, ozone is really important because it blocks harmful UV radiation from getting down to the Earth. In the troposphere, which is the ground level, it's actually a pollutant, all right, and it's actually quite dangerous to humans. In concentrations of excess of 0.15 parts per million, it causes respiratory um, problems in particular, all right, so um, people have problems breathing. Uh, it cracks rubber, which if you're thinking about in terms of car engines, um, you've got rubber gaskets in the car engines, which can be quite um, uh, dangerous if they are uh, cracked. And it can also slows down photosynthesis in plants. So obviously that um, causes an issue as well in terms of oxygen replenishment and reduction of CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, <clears throat> the other main issue is that the ozone can react with unburnt hydrocarbons or volatile organic compounds, commonly called VOX. Okay, sometimes you'll hear them referred to as uh, ROGs. ROGs are reactive organic gases. Uh, it's a similar sort of thing. They react with the ozone and form what's called peroxyacetyl nitrates, or commonly PANs. Uh, these are, so this is the um, example of it here. So uh, you, uh, you've got your nitrogen dioxide here, your ozone in here, um, and that reacts with your unburnt hydrocarbon here, okay, to form your peroxyacetyl nitrate, which are very severe respiratory irritants as well, okay. Um, I've got paint um, up here because paint actually um, gives off um, volatile organic compounds. That paint smell you can smell is actually um, organic compounds which are going off into the air. Um, so that's the kind of um, thing we're talking about in terms of um, volatile organic compounds, the ones that readily um, go up into the air. And um, in car engines, car engines are only about 30% efficient in terms of burning fuel. There's a lot of your petrol which actually gets vaporised in, temp in the high temperature of a combustion engine and goes up into the atmosphere as unburnt octane. So what they've done to um, counteract the um, presence of photochemical smog or the formation of photochemical smog is to introduce catalytic converters into cars. Now catalytic converters are completely designed to remove nitrogen monoxide before it can react. So that's your primary pollutant. If you can stop your nitrogen monoxide from going out into the atmosphere, it won't react to form nitrogen dioxide. You won't then get your ozone formed and you won't get your pans formed. Okay, so it's really important if we can stop that. What they do is they have this um, honeycomb structure inside which just increases the surface area. And what happens is that your um, oxides of nitrogen, which your NOx is down here, your carbon monoxide and your unburnt hydrocarbons here, they all come through your catalytic converter. Uh, what happens is the catalytic converter has a lot of surface area that the molecules can stick to, allows the uh, rate of reaction to be increased. Um, that'll be a bit later on in one of the next videos. And what happens is that your carbon monoxide and your nitrogen monoxide, all right, um, they react to form nitrogen gas, which is obviously harmless. It's 78% of the atmosphere and carbon dioxide. Now, obviously, carbon dioxide is not great because it can produce a greenhouse effect. But carbon monoxide is an asphyxiant. So what that means is that um, it prevents the uh, absorption of oxygen into the bloodstream. And so that can lead to um, death as well. People who die of asphyxiation are generally blue because they haven't got the oxygen 
um, going into their bloodstream and, and creating oxyhemoglobin, which is red. So um, it's much more beneficial to have um, carbon dioxide than it is um, carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide, which contributes to photochemical smog. All right, so that's the end of the photochemical smog topic. As always, if you've got any questions, just ask. Um, otherwise, um, go back over it, have a look, maybe look at some of the YouTube videos that there are links to as well. And um, if you've got any more questions, just ask. Thanks, guys.